Napoleon Bonaparte's great lessons on leadership. There are people who are born to lead. Those who were born with natural leadership qualities. That they know how to command the respect of other people easily. But perceptions in the modern age have changed. And leadership is now considered an attribute that can be learned. For sure, you have come across several leadership training and seminars and courses that focus on teaching leadership lessons. However, the best teachers when it comes to leadership are those who have made a mark in history and using their actions and legacy as points of instruction. Undoubtedly, one of the most notable and greatest leaders in history is Napoleon Bonaparte. In this video, we will get a glimpse about the history and actions of Napoleon Bonaparte and his life and leadership lessons which we can possibly apply in our daily life. Napoleon Bonaparte, born on the 15th of August 1769, was a French military commander and political leader. He was one of the greatest conquerors in the history of the modern world. Napoleon's rise came in a time of chaos, during the French Revolution. During his peak of his reign, he conquered almost the whole of continent Europe with a mix of military ingenuity, ambition and cold-bloodedness. He became Emperor of the French and King of Italy as Napoleon I. He had power over most of Europe at the height of his power, and his actions shaped European politics in the early 19th century. Napoleon benefited from the large number of battles in which he led forces. Among his 43 listed battles, he won 38 and lost only 5. Napoleon's political and cultural legacy endures to this day, as a highly celebrated and controversial leader. He initiated many liberal reforms that have persisted in society, and is considered one of the greatest military commanders in history. His campaigns are still studied at military academies worldwide. Between three and six million civilians and soldiers died in what became known as the Napoleonic Wars. He became one of the most brilliant military tacticians and strategists of his time. He was fearless in the battlefield. There are other words that have been used to describe him. Tyrant, motivator, revolutionary, ruthless politician. But one of his most enduring titles was that of a leader. Napoleon was known not only for his work, but also his use of powerful words to inspire many. Here are some of those which can help you be a great leader. Leaders are dealers in hope. The role of a leader is to articulate a vision, a destination, then to encourage the actions that will be required to reach that goal. Hope, if it is anything, is the belief that there is something to look forward to. Napoleon was a man of great vision and imagination. During his reign as emperor, he would win his men over with his visions of great glory. Also he would devise revolutionary military tactics that was well ahead for any military leader in his time. Once again, we see that leadership with vision is extremely important. Before you can lead people, people also need to know where you are leading them. Be ready to share your organizational vision at all times, because it inspires people to go another mile with you. Being present is also expected from a leader, but being present where you are needed is more important. Napoleon had many people with large amounts of abilities, skills and talents under his command, and he skillfully led them where their skills are needed or required. He made it a point to be there with them, so he could direct them better. He knew where to spot opportunities where his people's skills and abilities will be put to use, and that is where he took them. The battlefield was his domain, and that was where you will find him, alongside and in front of his men. Napoleon was a very effective motivator. Wartime is definitely not a time for upbeat spirits, but with several speeches, he was able to revive the fighting spirit of men who were battle-weary. As a teenager, Microsoft Chairman Bill Gates enjoyed reading and was inspired about the exploits of the French military genius Napoleon who built up a French empire in Europe, leading troops to victories across the continent. Eventually, Bill Gates has conquered the world with his computer software, blitzing opponents along the way. Victory belongs to the most persevering. This quote reflects his belief in the importance of perseverance in achieving success. This means that no matter how difficult the going situation, one must not give up upon the objective that has been chosen. When he was in military college in Paris, Napoleon was routinely bullied by his peers for his accent, birthplace, short stature, 
mannerisms and inability to speak French quickly, but he persevered to learn everything he needed to learn. He emphasized that success is not achieved through a single act of brilliance or luck, but through consistent and persistent effort over time. Work hard as there is no shortcut to success and hard work never goes unrewarded. Impossible is a word to be found only in the Dictionary of Fools, which describes that assuming anything is less than achievable makes you a fool. It is particularly relevant in his life, because of all that he did as one of the major leaders of France and the Revolution and is still greatly known today. He started from practically nothing and quickly rising to the top, a life which no one would have suspected. He was a small person, but had a large ego, and used these words to make it clear that his plans to concur Europe were not just a fantasy, but something he would do. As is always the case with fear, the fear of defeat is often more overwhelming than defeat itself. It forces one into submission or despair even before the contest is truly over. Know your people. Unlike the monarchy that was ruling France during that time, Napoleon understood the importance of winning people over to himself. He would know his soldiers by name and he would call them as he walked through the camps. Sometimes when we work in organization, it is tempting to hide behind the desk and manage your whole organization by email or phone calls. But ultimately, organizations are built upon people relationships and it is your relationships that will ensure your continual success and leadership. Take time to get to know your team. Instead of telling someone over email, Perhaps walking over to their table will do far more than achieve the task. It will bond you and your team member. Great ambition is the passion of a great character. Those endowed with it may perform very good or bad acts. All depends on the principles which direct them. It is not really bad to become ambitious. This is your catalyst to be successful to invent or do something great. To become useful to society. Towards doing something great, do not be satisfied with, just enough, when you can have the, most. Do not settle for, just all right, when you can be the, best. Aim high, be ambitious, be greedy. It goes without saying that the effort you put in should also be at its fullest. If you won't aim high, that has very little difference to not aiming for anything at all. Never interrupt your enemy when he is making a mistake. Never interrupt your enemy when he is doing a mistake, allow him to do so. Know that everything is fair in love and war. When you are in a competition, you ought to focus on your own work, and that's when you should make up your mind that you are not there for helping others. You can never afford to help others all the time. There is absolutely no point in interrupting your enemy. When you are participating in a race, you should stay focused in your own job, without bothering about what others are doing. In war, and in lawsuits, when the opponent is making a mistake, it helps you. Therefore, it is not a good idea to hinder an opponent. It is better to let your opponent sink deeper in the swamp, dig a bigger hole for himself. Show me a family of readers, and I will show you the people who move the world. Napoleon's family valued reading and education. Napoleon never stopped learning from reading. This means that a leader should never feel and act like he knows everything and, thus, no longer sees the need to learn anything anymore. There is always, always, something new to learn. Napoleon never stopped seeking to improve himself by acquiring knowledge and learning whatever could be learned, which he then used in his future endeavors. Even as a young boy, he read a lot, focusing on the classics, particularly those of notable leaders in history such as Alexander the Great. In the formulation of the Napoleonic Code, Napoleon entrusted the task to equally brilliant individuals, but he still joined the lengthy meetings, astounding everyone with his amazing grasp of all the relevant details. This is proof that, even at the height of his power as a leader, he never stopped learning. Leaders in business have to be aware of a lot of things, even beyond the scope of the industry that they are in. This is not just a way to widen their horizons, but to also keep their minds alert and sharp, to make it easier for them to spot opportunities once they arise. The future destiny of the child is always the work of the mother. The dominant influence of Napoleon's childhood was his mother, whose firm discipline restrained a rambunctious child. Later in life, 
Napoleon stated, My success and everything good that I have done, I owe to my mother. Let France have good mothers, and she will have good sons. By this, he required all of his soldiers while hiring, to have been raised by good mothers. Generally, mothers are highly responsible women. They certainly play a very important role in the upbringing of a child. Most noteworthy, mothers play a huge role in determining a child's attitude. Whether a child will be good or evil in the future depends upon the mother. Also, Napoleon's maternal grandmother had married into the Swiss Fesch family in her second marriage, and Napoleon's uncle, the Cardinal Joseph Fesch, would fulfill a role as protector of the Bonaparte family for some years. On facing grief, this soldier, I realized, must have had friends at home and in his regiment. Yet he lay there deserted by all except his dog. I looked on, unmoved, at battles which decided the future of nations. Tearless, I had given orders which brought death to thousands. Yet here I was stirred, profoundly stirred, stirred to tears. And by what? By the grief of one dog. Napoleon Bonaparte, on finding a dog beside the body of his dead master, licking his face and howling, on a moonlit field after a battle. Napoleon was haunted by this scene until his own death. A woman laughing is a woman conquered. The word conquered here is not meant in a controlling context, but love and romance. The word conquered here equates to the other known saying, the key to a woman heart is laughter, which has far less calories than the male equivalent, the key to a man's heart is his stomach. The studies didn't reveal that men tried harder than women to be funny, or that one gender made the other one laugh more, but it did show that the more a woman laughed at a man's jokes, the more likely she was romantically interested in him. Napoleon was said to be very fond of his first wife Josephine, until he discovered that she had been cheating on him. To understand the man, you have to know what was happening in the world when he was twenty. The years of early adulthood are crucial to the formation of an entire outlook toward life. You have to know what was happening around the environment a person was in when he was twenty to understand that person. Bonaparte was fifteen years and two months old when he went to the military college of Paris. Then inspector of the military schools, describes Bonaparte in the following terms. Height 4 feet 10 inches 10 lines, is in the fourth class, has a good constitution, excellent health, character obedient, upright, grateful, conduct very regular, has been always distinguished by his application to mathematics. He knows history and geography very passably. What was happening in your generation when you were in your twenties? What did it influence you to do? War, famine, the arrival of the World Wide Web, Wi-Fi Internet, Online Shopping, YouTube. Persistence is key for your success. Napoleon saw the importance in persistence in attaining victory. We would see that most evidently in his coming back to take the throne of France even after he was exiled. Whatever you do, remember that consistent effort will be the key of your success. You can start off failing a few times, but it is your ability to come back and try again that will ensure your success in the long run. Death is nothing, but to live defeated and inglorious is to die daily. This implies that he may never have kept trying if he lived and could have done so much more, and that the only thing that there was out there to stop him was death. On a larger scale, this quote can be applied to any person's life. If individuals aimed higher, there would no longer be barriers on what they want to do. Some get hung up on the belief that something cannot be done, yet one never knows that if there are actions towards it, it may very likely be achieved. In this world, everything is possible on the basis of willpower, dogged determination and sacrifice. The meaning of this quote, mainly, is that fools simply have wishes, and they are tamed and subdued by setbacks, while great minds have purpose, and they rise above these setbacks and fight their way to victory. Especially through the case of Napoleon, it is known that with determination, if the smallest of men can achieve great things.